Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over an installation of Oracle WebLogic for Windows 7. So as you can see right now, I'm on Oracle's website. You just go ahead to, to the uh, download tab. And what you're looking for is Fusion middleware, including WebLogic server. Select that. Accept the agreement. And what you're looking for is the Windows install. Go ahead and select download. Now if you don't have an Oracle account, you can create a free one. Um, right after you create it and when you sign in uh, your download will begin immediately I've already done this so uh, I'm not gonna do that again so in my download folder you will see a file like this go ahead and start it up this may take a while select yes and it will go ahead and start installing this is will be a fairly big install so you want to have at least two gigs of uh, hard disk free go ahead and select next okay uh, first important thing is that when you do your install, you do not want any spaces in your install path. Java does not support spaces in their install path. And if you were to install it in, say, program files in which there's a space, what will uh, happen is that when you run your local web logic on Windows 7, it probably will not work. So just keep it short and uh, without spaces. So I'm just going to select the default, which is fine. Uh, for our purposes, uh, we will not be using that, so we just unselect that. Typical install is fine. These are all fine. Make it available for all users. As you can see, it's going to be about a gig and a half of install. And at this point, I'm going to pause the video and I'll pick back up when it's done installing. Okay, we're back. And as you can see, uh, completely installed. Uh, run quick start. Uh, that's something that we will want to do, so you can just keep that checked. Go ahead and select done. We can close this out. So this is since this is a brand new WebLogic install, we'll select the first option. So what we're doing right now is we're going to be creating our WebLogic domain. So the WebLogic server, that's your server, that's your shell, the domain. It's going to contain uh, is what's going to run all your projects. So all your, you know, Java web services or your web pages. You can create multiple domains. Um, for our purposes, we're going to be creating web services and also websites. So I'm going to select this one, uh, the JAXWS standing for web services. And then you can just, you want to name your domain again no uh, you don't want to have any spaces in it so I'm just gonna call this my web domain because that's what it's gonna be running and uh, the username and password is only gonna be for uh, your domain that's gonna be running on your box so you don't have to make it anything complicated what I would suggest is something like weblogic1 to make it simple and easy to remember Click next. You you really don't need any of these. And then go ahead and hit create. Uh, once this is complete, we're going to go ahead and go into Eclipse. You don't want this checked. You're not going to need to start this. So we're done here. We're going to close it out. So what we've done is uh, we've created our domain, and now what we need to do is we need to go into our Eclipse, which is going to be our ID. That's where all our um, code is going to be developed. So we want to link uh, Eclipse and then WebLogic, uh, and then time both to the domain. So just want to click Oracle Enterprise Pack for Eclipse. Go ahead and start that up.
for my purposes, I'm going to change where I want to keep my projects uh, right in the same place where I put my Oracle installation. So in here, under my Oracle folder, I'm going to create a new folder called This is just, uh, you can create it anywhere you want, but for my purposes, this is where I would like it. Okay. So, as soon as this boots up, you go ahead and go to your workbench. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change our perspective. So, you go ahead and go to Windows, Open Perspective, and we want to go to Java EE. After we do that, you go ahead and click on this tab. You right-click down here, and we're going to build our WebLogic server. So, now you can build other servers besides WebLogic servers, obviously. But for this demo, we're going to be building a WebLogic server. I am just going to select the latest one. If this is something that you're going to be doing for a company you work for, or you know, a project in which they have a specific uh, Web WebLogic uh, server already built, you want you want to go ahead and select the ones that uh, is already running. But for our purposes, we're just going to select the latest one. Hit next, then we're going to hit browse. And where we're going to be going is we're going to be going back to where we installed Oracle. So, so it's Oracle. Then you want to go to middleware. And then you're looking for WL server 12.1. And when you select OK, it'll get all of its files that it needs. Domain directory, that was the domain that we created so you can go to known domains select your web domain in which you created click next you don't have any projects right now so uh, we we'll just hit finish and there is your web logic server down here so to test whether or not this works we're just gonna go ahead and create a very quick project we're gonna select dynamic web pages and I'll say com because it's a website and we'll say YouTube and then we can say 3082. And then we can hit finish. And there it is. Wait for it to load. It's still loading down. We'll go to web contents and then we'll right click and then we'll create I already said index that HTML and then in the body we'll just say hello world you can go ahead and save that so we're gonna come down here to our web logic server we're gonna right click we're gonna say add remove we're going to take the project that we just created, add it over, hit finish, and then you can run uh, your WebLogic server in debug mode or you can just start the server. Most of the time you'll probably go into debug mode because you can put stop points uh, on anything that you deploy to your WebLogic server. So we'll go ahead and start that up. Allow. This may take a few minutes depending on how quickly your machine is. Uh, 
uh, once your WebLogic server starts up, you'll notice that uh, your perspective changes. You can easily toggle back and forth up here. So you can go back to your Java EE perspective or you can go back into debug mode. I'll go ahead and just stick with this perspective. As you can see, it's deployed and it's been synchronized. So what we can do now is we can go to our web page. We should be able to type. We'll go host, host, colon, 7001, slash, slash, and whatever our project name is. So our project name is com, YouTube, 3082 hit enter that the www And there we go. You need the HTTP uh, colon slash. If we were to use a uh, another browser, you probably most likely will not have to add that in. So if we copy that, we go to Chrome. You wouldn't need to add that in. But there you go, that's the installation of a WebLogic server, so you can create all of your projects over here, and then when you need to deploy it, you just go to server, make sure it's down here, and then you can click highlight this, and you can go ahead and republish any new changes that you put in, or you can stop it and start it. Okay, uh, thank you.